more than happy to tell you how much I'm paid. I'm paid annually about... Anyway, we were staying with some good, close, law-abiding friends recently, lovely people, and they've raised a, a large family, done it beautifully, really, you know, the, the good guys. The, the kids, by the way, are growing up to be model citizens. They're contributing to Canada and, and the greater world. Very proud of these people. But I've got to tell you, this particular friend, my friend, he is a criminal. You see, he has guns. Now, they're legal. He, he locks them, of course. But he said to me that if the government tried to impose too many restrictions or take them away, he, he wouldn't allow that. He would, he would bury them. He would hide them. You see, he's a criminal. How frightened do you feel when you meet such people or when you visit rural Canada, where there are loads of guns? Do you feel intimidated? Do you feel intimidated when you visit farms in the US, in the Midwest? Have you ever been to Switzerland? Seems one of the safest countries on earth when I go there, but my golly, almost everyone in that country has a gun in the house. In Israel, where firearms are so common, the violent crime problem they face right now in the urban centers is knife fights in bars when people are drunk. Isn't that odd? In 1945 in Britain, and I'm sure Canada was not dissimilar, tens of thousands of men brought, well, enemy handguns back from the war as souvenirs. They weren't supposed to, but they did. They weren't stored particularly well, they, and kids, well, they tended to play with them, even take them to school. But it was very, very safe to be a young person in those days. You know the story. It's not guns that kill people. It's not guns that kill people, but scum with guns that kill people and the mentally deranged with guns that kill people. The easy solution, wouldn't you agree? Make sure that only sane, good people have access to firearms. Now, of course, there must be criteria here, but government at every level seem to be obsessed, not with keeping guns from killers, but with taking guns away from good people. And more of that in an interview in a few moments' time. But all will be well because... Well, that old clown and fraud, Piers Morgan, a laughing stock in England, that's where he's from, he's on the case. If you that's would like there. to have the right to have a tank and you don't agree because with us, right. now, now you're committing one, straw man, Now you're committing straw man, Because all you're doing, that's And that's you know that's something? That's it makes what? me sick when I hear people Piers, say that kind Piers. of thing. Piers, Piers, when did I say that, Piers? It makes me sick when I hear people... And I'm counting my money all the time I pretend to be angry. Uh, there are fanatics on both sides, of course, but, but, but in this country, at least, the gun owners I meet, some of the most sensible and balanced of people, I don't own a gun. I'm not really that interested in them, to, to be honest with you, but I am passionately interested in freedom and in honesty. And I'm so tired of the refusal to name the real reasons for gun crime. What are they? Family breakdown? promiscuity leading to multiple children and the absence of father figures, greed, irresponsibility, laziness, laziness, sloth, the refusal to work for a living, uh -huh. an absurd culture of respect where the mildest slight is apparently justification for shooting someone. I could go on and so could you. But rather than me going on, let's leave it to, um, to Ann Coulter. Um, you get a gun permit. You, that is not a public record for exactly the reason you say. Criminals know whose house they can home invade when people are there. This is why home invasions are ten times higher in Britain than they are in this country because there's no g private gun ownership. Um, and as a consequence, you're much better off as a burglar burglarizing a home when the people are there. Their wallets are out. Um, their keys are out. You can find out where the safe is. Um, and as you say, they also know um, people who live in Westchester County County who work in Manhattan, for example, when they are not there, when they're commuting to New York, they can't bring their guns. That's when you break in and steal the gun. And that's a curious thing. I mean, why, as, as that man just said, why aren't we getting names of, of recently paroled criminals? People with gun permits, by definition, do not have criminal records. Where? Why can't we get the criminal records? No, we can't get that. Why can't we get a record of women who have had abortions? Um, they get money from Planned Parenthood. They get money from Medicare, from Medicaid. Much of this is as it, it, their tax subsidies. I think, you know, mothers might want to know what other women on their street have have, um, might be willing to murder a child. Makes you think a bit, doesn't it? But then thinking outside of the box might be, well, might be the next thing they want to take away from us. Hmm. The issue of gun control, well, who will save us? Salvation by faith alone. Faith Goldie. <laughs> 
Michael. For, for a couple of Catholics to say that on air is, is worrying. <laughs> Why are you so interested in guns, by the way? Um, that's a very good question. I know it's, it's, it's an expensive hobby, one where I suppose that there just seems to be an infinite amount of IQ that is, you know, somewhat attainable. And so I just try and build on, build on. It's just it's a hobby. It's a pastime. Plus, it's really, really nice to get better at shooting. Really? Yeah. I, I've, I've barely ever fired a gun a couple of times. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd like to be a sniper, though. Yeah. You know, I'll be a long way away and just be able to get people. Enough of that. Uh, gun control is necessary within reasonable limitations. I think most people would agree. But sometimes the American debate, I, I believe, is, is beyond Canadian moderation, that there are extremes on both sides. But we're not like that here. We just want a, a balanced, moderate control of guns and an intelligent, responsible ownership of guns, too. Now, another level of government wants to interfere? Yes, the RCMP specifically. They're basically gunning to uh, restrict particular types of rifles. So I believe we have a chart back there. So folks at home, you don't have guns, you don't know too much about it, don't worry about it. The chart uh, is uh, there's a there chart. It is. There it is. Three different classes of firearms, non-restricted and restricted, for which you can gain licenses prohibited. You cannot have a license to that category anymore. The rifle we're talking about right now is the Swiss Arms Classic Green. It's a semi-automatic uh, rifle and it's now labeled non-restricted. RCMP might very well be moving to put it into the prohibited class. So now that we've got the ground down, uh, it, it, it basically any single gun that comes into our country has to already be examined by RCMP and RCMP yeah. will tell you what kind of a gun it should be. They did this 12 years ago. These guns have been in circulation for 12 years. And who are the sort of people who own... I, I'm not aware of this gun. I, I'm sure I'd barely recognize it, but what sort of people own it? Um, well, people with money. Uh, right. It costs about $4,000 right. each with, you know, bells and whistles in, and not to mention the fact that there has never been an incident involving the Swiss Arms Classic there ring. never been an incident no. owned by wealthier people who are very serious about uh, gun ownership and they store their guns properly. The RCMP, with all due respect, is riddled with problems right now. All sorts of internal issues often not doing its job very well. Uh, we've had uh, evidence and examples of brutality. We had this in Vancouver, we've seen it elsewhere, and incompetence uh, leading to fatalities, which is tragic. But they want to... Why don't they just police people properly and get bad guys off the street? Why are they interfering with law-abiding people? Well, that's a very good question, especially when you consider the fact that reclassification in this instance will lead necessarily to confiscation, the RCMP taking your property, because, again, you cannot be upgraded. Your license cannot be upgraded. So if to you get... own one of these guns, do we know how many are in the country? No, but presumably uh, quite a few thousand okay. when you consider it's been in the country for 12 years. So people who paid three or four grand for it, uh, there's no incident, nothing has ever been done with a gun that's broken the law, will now have the police going to confiscate the weapon? Well, it could go one of two ways, right? And remember that for any reclassification, essentially what needs to happen is that cabinet needs to be part of this decision. But there are loopholes. One is that uh, if a gun is deemed to be a variant of a prohibited gun, yeah. well, you don't need cabinet. Or if it's easily converted to a fully automatic firearm, those are banned in our country, then you don't need cabinet. Um, so uh, easily convertible, I really wish we knew what that meant. There yeah. is no elucidation within uh, the actual law. And so I think that's really what should resonate to folks at home, is that it's RCMP, these are civilians essentially, unelected, who are moving to change laws to make your property that you've owned for 12 years now no longer your property, mm. and it carries with it the full weight of the law. Three years in prison you might be facing. Now, I just want to tell you what might happen going forward. Either they will make folks voluntarily hand them in, voluntarily rather hand them in, perhaps a buyback at $4,000 a piece. So they, so they, they would compensate? Perhaps. They only have a $260,000 budget to do so right now for all firearms uh, that, that are going that, to be compensated. Well, if there are thousands, that wouldn't cover it. Right? No, not at all. Um, or else they can do what they did in the 1990s, which is they have to get warrants now, uh, and they go back to the retailers and find out who has purchased these firearms and right. go door to door. Now, I did talk to Ed Berlew. Lawyer manpower involved in that. Uh, considering the fact there are 1,200 firearms dealers across Canada and how many warrants you have to get. Um, uh, I talked to Ed Berlew, a gun rights advocate, lawyer, great guy all around. He elucidated what it means or what would happen if you don't turn in your gun. Let's take a look at that clip. Because there is no review of the RCMP opinion until the cuffs are put on you, you're taken out of your house before that at gunpoint, your whole house is taken apart or your apartment's taken apart as they look for firearms and ammunition. Your, all of your, your goods are, are taken. 
because it's a serious matter of being charged with having a prohibited firearm, you will be put on a very strict bail, something akin to house arrest. And then you're supposed to defend yourself in court and hire another expert to defend you and say the RCMP opinion is wrong. You know, what is incredible about this, apart, I mean, that on its own is, is so frightening, but I have a few, quite a few friends who, who are officers in, in Toronto, some in Hamilton and around the Niagara region, and I, ca I can't say his name, but I know him very well. He's a very, really good guy, good, good cop. He said to me, he said, mate, that there are parts of the city. We, we, could, we could just put a cruiser there. We could, if we stopped 30 cars in a, in a row, 20 of them will have illegal guns and there'll be criminals in there. He said, if we do that, I'll lose my job. He said, I, I often, I, I will stop a car, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the guy in there. I know he's carrying an illegal weapon. Nothing we can do. So we know who the criminals are. The, we know the scum. Nothing could be done. But law-abiding people can be turned into criminals, incredibly expensive bail conditions, handcuffed, humiliated, because they have in the past bought a weapon that was entirely legal. A paperwork criminal overnight. That is what we're looking at. And Ed Burleau, who just gave that statement there, he knows because he's defended those paperwork criminals from behind bars and even some now, uh, you know, not behind bars. You can give me too much, but it all had to do with reclassification mm. cases. No, it's, it's, it's absurd, Michael. And you know what? He also mentioned something else there, and that was RCMP opinion. These are all opinions that the RCMP issues. They're then put on a table. So I think that this gun is non-restricted. I think this gun is restricted. And it goes on. However, um, if you are found to have a prohibited gun inside your house, even though overnight something changed and you didn't know about it, um, they, those opinions carry the full weight of the law. Mm. I, I, it, it genuinely staggers me the way we've got things so terribly wrong. Uh, I have respect for the police, but their opinion about this, I really couldn't care less. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be insulting it, but their job is to catch criminals, not to reshape the culture of Canada. The, the facts haven't changed. The firearm hasn't changed. All that has changed is the opinion of the RCMP. And like you said, Michael, I think a lot of folks at home can agree. Common sense gun control, although I don't really like the words gun control, but common sense control on mm. uh, uh, firearms that can kill makes sense. But this is nonsensical. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.